there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a roll top desk. Well, it's an exciting time for the show uh, as this build has been in the back of my mind to do for quite some time. Obviously, we're not going to get it done uh, in a short period of time. It's going to be a multi-part build. I just don't know how many. Um, throughout the past couple months, you've seen shows like Router Made Tambours um, and uh, let's see, Rail and Style Joinery, that sort of thing. And that was all um, kind of an introduction to or videos that will complement this build as there will be uh, excessive rail and style joinery as well as the router made tambours for the actual roll top part of this desk. Um, so I don't want to talk too much because there's a lot to cover so we're going to start off right away with getting into the plans that I'll be using for this particular build. Well the set of plans that I've chosen to use for this build uh, are the roll top desk plans from um, American Furniture Design Company. And I purchased these plans at Lee Valley. Um, and this is just the cover page. But inside the plans, you get this one rather large drawing, which has a heck of a lot of information on it. And then, um, of course, the assembly directions for the desktop. There's quite a few pages in these directions and uh, I've gone through the plans. I can't say how good or how bad they are at this point because until I actually go through and uh, work with them it's really hard for me to say one way or the other. Um, but before you can start on this, you should be, if you're going to use these plans and follow along with me, you should be going through them extensively and seeing if there's any things that you don't understand. And if you don't understand them, you need to try to figure them out before you carry on because you could mess yourself up. So the first thing you want to start with is the stock that you need. Well, you can choose whatever stock you like for this particular build, um, but for me, uh, I'd like more of a traditional style desk here. Um, so I've chosen red oak. It's, it's a classic uh, species to make one of these from, and I think in the end of it all, I think it'll be one heck of a great looking desk. So I have quite a bit of uh, eight quarter rough cut lumber here, and the first step in, in moving forward with the desk, of course, is to start milling it. And uh, for that, we need to start with the base of the desk. So it's kind of built in a modular form almost with a bunch of panels, rail and style and raised panel uh, sections that all connect together. So if we look at the plans, we'll be able to see a little better as far as what we need to mill out of this um, eight quarter oak. Well, we can see here on the plans um, that we have this section right here, which shows the, the side profile of our desk. And this section right here, which is our front, um, it's not an exploded view, but there's a lot of detail here that we need to look at. And where I'm going to start with this desk is these side panels right here. I want to make four of these because as you can see there's one here, one here, and one here, and then one on the outside. And from what I can tell and from what I can see from the drawings and from the written instructions, there are four of these panels that will all be identical. So the first step that I'd like to do in this desk, and it's going to be a time consuming process, but I need to cut all of the stock to its dimensions. So all of the uh, rails and all of the styles that will be in this uh, in these side panels, I need to cut them all to their dimensions so that we can start with the joinery. 
Now you want to make sure that you cut all the pieces at once. You don't want to be fumbling around um, with having to set up these the rail and style bit repeatedly. So you want all these pieces to be identical um, as far as their setup so that if you should mix up say this piece with uh, a piece from another panel that would go here you don't have to worry about your setup not being the same. If all the pieces are done in one run, then whether this piece goes on the side panel or goes on this panel or this panel or this panel, they'll all fit together the same and each piece, as long as they're for the same configuration, will be compatible with each panel. So we're gonna start off with milling all of these pieces that we need for the four side panels required for the bottom or the base of the desk. So in order to save some wear and tear on my bandsaw when I'm doing the resaw for these pieces, I would like to get them closer to their final dimension, mostly on the length. I don't really want to be running through uh, 10 foot boards of oak. It's just cumbersome it's it's uh, it's just hard on me is what it is the the saw so on page 14 here of the um, instructions you'll see your bill of materials this is where it starts as far as what you need to cut for each individual piece so for here we're going to be doing the lower desk and construct four sides the same so this will be where we're gonna start right here so take a note of the lengths and the widths, etc., that you need. And we're going to mill the stock and cut the dimensions for all of these pieces for our side frames. Um, and that, of course, is going to start uh, with the jointer planer getting a nice flat surface and then a perpendicular surface. And then to the bandsaw for the resaw, then from there, uh, we'll do the thickness planer and, of course, finishing off with a ripping blade at the table saw and then a cross-cut blade to do the final length dimensions. My suggestion here, guys, on any set of plans in any directions and any cut lists, double check. So if this says that uh, you need four pieces, one and seven eighths by 29 inches by three quarters of an inch thick, Take that dimension, that measurement, and cross-reference it with your actual plan to make sure that what you're cutting is what they say you should be cutting. The worst thing here, or it, it, it really sucks when you cut a piece following the plans and uh, it somehow slipped through their quality control and the dimensions somehow got mixed up. So double check cross-reference, make sure that the dimensions are correct. continue to mill all of the stock for the four panels of the base of this desk. Um, they're all three quarters of an inch thick stock. So for the rails, styles, and mullions, uh, it'll all be three quarters of an inch. So something I'd like to point out is it can be very tedious and monotonous to stand at the jointer for X number of hours just uh, face planing these boards and getting your perpendicular side. It could be tedious to stand at the bandsaw resawing for that long or at the planer. So mix it up. Choose one section say to mill um, and mill all the boards for that one section. You don't have to cut them to their final dimension um, but at least you can mix it up a bit so you're not standing at one tool getting fatigued for too long. 
Uh, each tool uses different muscles and different groups of muscles, and you want to give them a break, so mix it up. Uh, I also want to point out something else here, just in reference to what I said earlier, but for that we're going to have to head over to the bench. So let's take a run over there and I'll explain what it is that I'm talking about. Well, what I want to point out is where I said about double checking and referencing your drawings uh, to the measurements on the cut list to make sure that things are correct. And here we have a prime example. Um, what we have here, this would be your uh, toe board or kickboard. Um, and underneath here, of course, is the bottom rail. This would be the middle rail. The edge pieces out here are your styles. And in the middle, where you have a piece that uh, has a panel cut on both sides, these are mullions, these center pieces. However, there is a standard with rail and style bit, and you can check uh, your rail and style router bits to see if they uh, coincide with that standard, that when cutting a rail piece, which would be your horizontal pieces here, or when you're cutting a mullion piece, which would be these middle pieces right here, those particular pieces need to be three quarters of an inch longer than the exposed dimension. The reason for that is this rail here, um, this mullion will fit into the slotted profile of that rail by three eighths of an inch. It will also fit into the slotted profile of this rail by three eighths of an inch. So this exposed measurement here should be three eighths plus three eighths longer, which is three quarter. Well, you can see here, they've given you your exposed dimension of 11 and seven eighths of an inch. That is for your mullion here. But if you check our cut list, um, here they call them inner styles. Nothing wrong with that. If you look at the cut list, they're calling for 11 and 7 eighths of an inch. Well, that is, according to the drawing, the exposed surface of the stock. So where is the extra three quarters of an inch? Well, on the cut list, it's not there. So I have added it. So that will be 12 and 5 eighths long for that particular piece, which is 11 and 7 eighths plus 3 quarters. So again, something to keep in mind. Check your drawings, reference them with your cut list, and make sure that everything is correct. I actually found one, two, three, four incorrect dimensions here, and they would not have been too long. They would have been too short, and that could have been disastrous. Well, now that I've caught that little discrepancy uh, in the plans, I will just continue with milling all the rails and styles and mullions for all four panels. And uh, then we're going to get into actually um, setting up our jig that we made uh, there a little while ago for our rail and style bits. So we will get into cutting those pieces. You guys don't need a video of me milling piece of wood after piece of wood. So I'm gonna do all the pieces and then I'm gonna come back and see you and we'll head over to the router table after that. Well, I have all the boards for the four side panels um, all plain down to their thickness of three quarters and I've got them cut in their width. And now I need to dimension them to their final length you want to keep in mind here the discrepancy that we found in the plans when cutting these. So my suggestion here would be we're going to square off the one end of the board on all of them and then place like pieces together. So there's going to be several pieces that are going to be the same dimension. So cut them all if you're using a miter fence with a stop block Cut them all at the same time so that they all end up to be the exact same length. And should one be a sixteenth less, let's say by accident, 
they will all be a sixteenth less so that they will still made up and they will still give you the square frames that you need. Also here you'll see that I've labeled each group with chalk and although the plans don't label them like this, I have written in my own letters to label each piece so that I don't get confused with what is what. So just a little suggestion for you, label each piece. So I'm going to cut these to their final length and as I said in the previous clip, then we're going to head over to the router table um, to start doing the rail and style joinery. I'm not going to get too deeply into it as far as the setup goes for the rail and style. Um, there was a video just prior to this, quite a while ago actually, but showing you how to use this uh, combination bit to do the rail and style joinery. And the whole purpose of that was so that during this build you guys could reference that video to show you the setup. So I have the bit set for the sticking cut and while we have it set for this, I need to pay attention to all my different pieces. And I'm going to be routing the inside edges. That's the long edges of all of the rails and all of the styles. As well, um, for the mullions, or I think they call them inner styles in this, pe in this particular plan, we need to route both of the long edges because of course they're going to have a panel inserted on either side. So you want to be careful here with what you're routing and make sure before you route that you know exactly which piece is being put into your machine. Uh, don't accidentally route an outside edge or both edges on say a rail or don't, you know, bottom line is pay attention and inside edges of all your rails, inside edges of all your styles, and both long edges of your mullions with the bit set for the sticking cut. thing to keep in mind here as well that I did not mention, as well as uh, routing the inner edges of all the rails and styles and both long edges of your mullions, um, this particular piece also has a mid rail and that mid rail will also be required to be routed on both um, long edges. Well now we've set up our bit for the coping cut which is the end grain cuts of all of our pieces. And we have our coping sled here that we made uh, not too long ago on the show. And I'm just gonna go through the setup of this uh, jig with you. So what we need to do is set your scrap piece here, uh, your sacrificial piece, which will help with the blowout uh, at the back end. and what we're going to do effectively is run it into our spinning bit using our hand here to slide it along until it makes contact with our bearing. Once it's tight against our bearing and um, in the right position left to right against the bearing, we're going to tighten it down with these two knobs. Now we know that that is set. Once we get that set in place, I want to take a block of wood and we're going to clamp it onto this uh, section here of the infeed table of our router and we're going to set our fence so that these are tight and we're going to clamp this together and I'll demonstrate the whole process. Once you get that block set up here that is the starting point for all pieces and I'll show you what to do from there. What 
I've done here is I've used some double-sided tape and I've attached this block to the fence just so I don't have these clamps in my way during the whole operation. And all you need to do now that you have this piece set and clamped into place with our hold downs here, adjust your fence, just bring it back, pull your coping sled back until you meet up with an edge there, and then once you have it flush with your sacrificial piece, you want to just lock down your fence. And what that'll do is give you a reference point now to set your pieces that you're routing. So um, you'll have that in place as a stop block for um, where to set your pieces when, when routing them. So once again, I'm not going to get into the setup of the uh, bit uh, in the coping position or how to adjust the height. Um, you guys can check out the rail and style video for that. But the process with the jig that has not been shown before, now that you have the block in place, your uh, stock will go in against your block. I don't have a square edge there. I'm going to have to trim that up. This is a scrap piece for test. So it'll go in against the block. You'll lock down your hold downs. And once you get them locked down, you will just run this piece through. Now you're already set for your distance here because you've used this stop block as a guide and you will carry on through with the cut and this sacrificial piece of MDF is going to eliminate the tear out on the back edge. So you want to uh, route all of your uh, end grain pieces now and uh, test fit as you go to make sure that things haven't slipped out of alignment. As I've been going along doing all the coping cuts on the end grain of all of the pieces here, I've been bringing it over to the table saw and assembling each panel test fitting, as I said, to make sure that nothing slipped out of place. And I'm quite happy with all of the fits here. Everything looks fantastic. Um, so route all of your coping cuts, assemble all four panels, don't glue anything, just dry fit for now and um, just test fit. Sand off any burring that you might get. Just be gentle on the sanding, guys, because you don't want to lose that routed profile. Um, carry on with that, and once we get that done, we need to cut a saw kerf in the top rail of each one of these panels. Well, now that I've got the first panel um, sized up, I decided to check the measurements and reference it, reference it back to the drawing. And it turns out that my whole panel is three quarters of an inch too long or too wide. That's the extra three quarter that we added. So I'd rather see that extra on there because I can trim that off to bring it down to the proper dimension. The bottom line is the dimensions here were incorrect. The cut list was right, the drawing was wrong. So the drawing is showing the exposed surface as being the same as what the cut list is. Turns out it should have been three quarters of an inch shorter on the drawing. No harm, no foul. I made the pieces three quarters of an inch longer, but at least I checked it and at least I didn't end up with them too short in the end. So. Now that I've done that with the first panel, checked it, I'm going to trim off three quarters of an inch off of all the pieces that I've gone and added that extra three quarter, and I'll reroute that end grain coping cut. 
Well, we've got those side panels all dry fit together now. Um, of course, with the rail and style, we still haven't done the panels, but that's coming. Um, with the top of the desk, which will come later in the build, is held on with these, these type of metal clips, and they allow for expansion of the wood without holding everything down tight and causing problems later. So for that, in the side pieces and in the back panel, which we haven't made yet, we're going to need to cut a saw kerf. Uh, you'll use your table saw for this, and the kerf will be 3 8 of an inch deep, and it will be 3 8 of an inch from the top of each of the top rails. And there you can see the kerf that's cut in our top rail that will house the clips that will hold down the top of our desk. Guys, that's all the time that we have for this week. Um, we've got a lot of progress done here with the rail and style joinery done on all four um, upright panels for the desk. Uh, we, we have a lot more to do on this build and uh, we're going to continue that on next week uh, when I see you again with yet another woodworking video.